All right, so in this problem, we're told a traffic light hangs from a pole as shown in the figure. The uniform aluminum pole AB is 7.2 meters long and has a mass of 12 kilograms. The mass of the traffic light is 21.5 kilograms. Determine A, the tension in the horizontal massless cable CD, and B, the vertical and horizontal components of the force exerted by the pivot A on the aluminum pole. So we basically have this traffic light, and we know it's going to be hanging from this pole here. So imagine this uh, line right here is our pole. And we also have this cable, right, with some tension. It's also going to be holding it uh, to this wall here. And so we're given a ton of information. Uh, we're given, let me just label these points here. So we have A, we have this is point B, we have D, and we have C here. Uh, we're given the length of this cord here, or this cable, or sorry, this uh, a bar, right? So this aluminum pole uh, is 7.2 meters. We're given the distance from our pivot point A to this, uh, right, this cable here, which is 3.8 meters. And uh, we're also given the mass of our traffic light, MT. We're given the mass of the pole. And we're also given, right, the length, I already said that. And so the first thing we want to do in order to solve this problem is draw the free body diagram. So let's go ahead and do that first. So I know at the middle, right, I'm going to estimate this to be about here, it, the... Uh, pull here is going to have a uh, right a force due to gravity. So we can call this mg, but since we're dealing with the pull, we'll call it mpg. So at the center, right, there's going to be some uh, force due to gravity straight down. We also know that the traffic light is going to have the same thing, which we call mtg, right? The force due to gravity is mg, and we're dealing with the traffic light, so mt. The next thing we know is this cable is going to have some tension right? And it's going to point this way. So we can call this F of T, right? So the force, uh, the force of tension, and we know it's going to point this way, right? Because it can only, right? It can't compress, right? It can only be in tension, not compression. So we know it's going to have to be holding this thing, right? And stopping it from falling. So we know it's going to point that way, right? Because if this thing would rotate, we know that the tension is what's stopping it from doing that. So obviously it's pointing from the left and it can't be in compression too. Uh, and then we also have the force at this pivot point here. So there's going to be two forces uh, straight up, which is F of P, we'll call it Y, right? The Y component. And we also have the X component here. So the Y component and the X component, right? How do I know which direction these are going to point? Well, I know the tension's to the left and it's the only force here. So FP of X uh, is going to go to the right in order to cancel that out. And then both of these forces here, MP, right? So the, the force due to gravities are down. So we know this has to point upwards. So that's basically the free body diagram. And now let's talk about how we're going to solve this problem. So the way we're going to do it is summing the torque about a point. So basically, we know the sum of the torque is going to be equal to zero, right? Because it's not moving. And the point we're going to pick to sum it about is this point right here, right? It's not rotating. Uh, so we know the sum of the torque at this point equals zero. And uh, we're going to choose this point right here, point A. The reason for that is we don't know FP, uh, which is going to basically eliminate it from the equation. Uh, and then we'll be able to solve for the rest of the forces. So you'll see how it works. But essentially, zero equals, and then what I'm going to do is sum up the torque. So uh, what things are going to cause torque? So we're going to have the torque, right? And we represent it with tau. The torque due to, we'll call this the pull, right? The mass of the pull, plus the torque due to the traffic light, we'll call that m, or we'll just call it t. Uh, we're also going to have the torque due to f of t, right, the torque due to the uh, uh, force due to tension. Uh, and then we're also going to have the torque due to this f of p, but you'll see why it's going to get canceled out in a second. Another thing to keep in mind is when you sum the torque, it's positive or negative depending on the way the force causes it to rotate. So we know this is going to be the point at which it rotates. Now, looking at this, if the force causes it to rotate in a counterclockwise direction, then your torque is negative. If it causes it to rotate in a clockwise direction, it's positive. So looking at these forces, I know MPG is going to make it go around like this, right? Because it's going to pull it. Same with MTG is going to make it go around like this. But F of T is going to make it go uh, this way, which is counterclockwise. Therefore, F of T is negative, while the other ones are positive. So this value, I can erase it here like that, this is actually going to be negative. And then this one, it doesn't really matter because it's going to get canceled out anyway, uh, but we'll just go ahead and add it. So now what I'm going to do is solve for each of these, starting with the torque of the pull. All right, so you need to know the formula for torque. 
torque is equal to force times distance times the sine of theta. Uh, generally, what I like to do is break it down uh, without the sine of theta, uh, though. So keep in mind what FD is. So we add this sine of theta in case the force is not perpendicular to the lever arm. But we're just going to make it so it is, and you'll see how it works in a second. But essentially, it's the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance to the point of rotation. So I'll just show you with each of these. Uh, but starting off with P, right, the torque due to the pull. We know the force is MPG, so we don't have to worry about that. Now, what is the perpendicular distance to the point of rotation? So uh, we know that it goes down straight like this, okay? So it goes down like this, right? And uh, we know it's going to be this distance here, okay? But we don't know what that is, and how are we going to find that? So the way I'm going to write it is, I know this whole pole is the distance L, okay? And I know that this angle right here, okay, is 37 degrees, right? You should just know this from trig. If you have two angles like this, sort of, this angle is the same as this angle. It's just a rule. So this would be 37 degrees, right? And if I draw this out a bit more, right? And I make this a triangle, essentially with our lever or our pole here, right? Imagine a triangle like that. This length right here, okay, this whole length is equal to L times the cosine of theta, where theta is this angle right here. Now, how does that work? Well, you know that this, let me go into a different color actually to make this a little easier to see. We know that this distance right here, right, the pole is length L, okay? And this is angle theta. And what we're trying to find is this distance right here, okay? And I know that the cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. We'll just call it x, okay? We know the adjacent side of our angle is x. The hypotenuse is L, right? Multiplying both sides, you get x equals L cosine of theta. So that's exactly where I come up with that. So I know this distance is L cosine of theta, okay? And what we're trying to find is uh, T do the pole. And I said D is the perpendicular distance or this distance right here. And since this is halfway up the pole, this is also halfway along this line. Therefore, if we just denote this distance L cosine of theta, this would essentially be, right, this whole thing, and it's halfway to it, this would just be one half L cosine of theta, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. This whole line, uh, L cosine of theta, we know it's halfway since it's in the center, uh, so it's one half L cosine of theta. So let me get back to my color here. Uh, this distance or the perpend, oh, it didn't change. This perpendicular distance here right, which is what we want, one half L cosine of theta, where L is obviously the length of the pole, 7.2 meters. Uh, and then cosine of theta is our, right, our angle theta there, which we know is 37 degrees. So that's TP. Now let's do the torque due to the traffic light. What is the force here? So it's MTG. And now it's pretty easy since this. So we know the length of the pole, right, is like this. So this whole length is L cosine of theta. So we know the force is gonna go down like this. And the way they drew it is kind of weird, but essentially this force is supposed to be acting at the end of this corner here. So it's supposed to be basically along the end of this triangle. Now where the distance there is L cosine of theta, okay? So instead of it being one half, it's all the way over at the corner now. And we know this distance of this triangle part, right, perpendicular to our force line was L cosine of theta. So Instead of one half now, it's just L cosine of theta since it's at the very end. So we knew the force was straight down. The perpendicular distance was this here, which as before is L cosine of theta. Next, we're gonna find the torque due to the force of tension. So as I said before, that's gonna be the force of tension, right? That's our force here. Now, what is the perpendicular uh, distance here? So no, it goes out this way. And they actually just give us the distance between here right, to there, which is our perpendicular distance there. So it's just 3.8 meters, right? So here it is, and then the distance is 3.8. So that's just easy to plug in. And then now notice the torque due to the FP. We have force, right, which would be FP times the distance. But notice that it's right on top of the point of rotation or the point where we're summing the torque. Uh, therefore, uh, the distance is zero, meaning F times zero is just still zero, so the torque would still be zero. So this term, uh, this term basically goes away. So I know the torque due 
t f of t, right? If I just move it to the other side here, since it equals zero, is equal to the torque or t p plus t uh, t like that, right? So the torque due to the force of tension is equal to the torque due to the uh, pull uh, plus the torque due to the traffic light. So plugging this in now, we have uh, m p g one half. Uh, actually, I'll need to fix it. Sorry. F of t times 3.8 is equal to mpg one half l cosine of theta plus mtg l cosine of theta. So all I did was just plug in these values into this equation. And then, yeah, so we actually know all these values. So F of t is going to be equal to mp, which is the mass of our pole, which was 21, or sorry, 12 kilograms times g, which is 9.8 multiply by one half times L, which is the length of the pole, which was 7.2 meters times the cosine of theta. As I said before, theta is this angle incline, which was the same as this. So it's 37 plus mass of the mass of the um, our traffic light, which was 21.5. Is that correct? Let me check on the problem. Yeah, 21.5 multiplied by g, 9.8, right, the acceleration due to gravity, times l, 7.2, times the cosine of theta again, which was 37, right? And then we have obviously divide by 3.8 to get rid of it on that side. And yeah, so got a pretty long thing here. Let's go ahead and calculate it out. So 12, we have 12 times 9.8 times 0.5 times 7.2 times the cosine of 37 plus 21.5 times 9.8 times 7.2 times the cosine of 37 dividing by 3.8, right? That gives us an F of T equal to 407.809. So you can say 407.81 or just round whoever your teacher would like. I'm just going to round to 408, so just make sure you round how your teacher wants you to. But essentially, the tension in that cable is going to be 408 newtons. So 408 newtons, that's going to be F of T there. Uh, and yeah, so that's your answer to A, I believe, right? They want us to find uh, the tension in the horizontal massless cable, so F of T. Uh, and then for B, we want to find the, for, uh, the horizontal and vertical components of the force exerted by the pivot A. So this one's actually going to be a bit easier to solve. Let me talk about uh, talk about how we're going to do this. So uh, in order to do this, we're just going to sum the forces in each direction. So in the x direction, I know I only have f of t and fp of x, right? The x component of f of p. If these are the only two forces in it, and we're assuming we're not moving, obviously they have to equal each other, right? So it's not moving, so the sum of the forces in the x equals 0. 0 equals, uh, if it goes to the left, I'll call it negative. So f of t is to the left, and then we're adding fp of x because it's to the right. And then if I move it to the other, uh, the other side, f of p of x is equal to the force uh, due to tension, right? So uh, we know that these two forces are going to have to be equal to each other, or it would uh, move. So fp of x is just equal to f of t. So I'm pretty sure it was 408, right? Yeah. 408 newtons. So that's your fp of x. So pretty easy. For that one. Now your FP of Y, we're going to sum the forces in the Y this time. So summing the forces in the Y direction, we know it's going to be equal to zero. Uh, and then what are the forces in the Y this time? So obviously we have FP of Y, right? It's going upwards in the way I drew it. So uh, I'm going to leave it as positive. And then we have minus MPG and MTG, since those are the only two other forces in the Y uh, going down. So minus mtg minus mpg. So essentially, fp of y is going to be equal to these two forces added up. So the weight forces of both the pole and the traffic light. So the mass of the traffic light, as I said before, 21.5 times g, which is just 9.8, plus the mass of the pole, which was 12 times g, once again, 9.8. So let's plug this in. 21.5 times 9.8 plus 12 times 9.8. You'll get 
328.3. Let me make sure I did that right. Yeah. So 328.3, since we're dealing with force, we're in Newtons. Uh, but yeah, so these are going to be your X and Y components of your force, uh, right? So of your force, force is exerted by the pivot A, so your X component of it and your Y component, right? And uh, yeah, so these are your answers to B. These right here were your answers to A. Uh, just reviewing what we did here. So we knew, right, I had to draw the free body diagram, uh, and then I knew if I could sum the torque about this point, I could get rid of those forces and actually solve for f of t, since it's the only unknown force. Uh, so I did that, sum the forces up, and then just solve for f of t. Right, obviously, I defined these here, and the distance was a little tricky, uh, but if you recognize this trick here with the triangle, you could just find it there, right? the perpendicular distance. Uh, and then it was just a matter of plugging in and solving. And then once I got f of t, I knew I could just sum the forces in both directions, since the only other forces I'm missing are each of these forces in their respective directions, right? f, p of x and fp of y. Doing that, we found it equals t, right? Because they're the only two forces in the x, which makes sense. Uh, and then the forces in the y, right? We know they're going to be equal to the traffic light and the um, pull, since those are the two forces in the y. Uh, but yeah, so these are your answers to b there, and then your answers to a is right here. So those are your answers, and uh, yeah, hopefully you found this video useful. Also, one thing looking at the problem, I, I guess I should add, when drawing this free body diagram, if you didn't understand, the pull or the traffic, or sorry, the cord is massless. So even though we had to take the mass of both of these, this was massless. So that's why we didn't include that. I just thought I should state that since I don't know if I made that clear in the beginning, but that's why we didn't have to include that. And uh, yeah, so those are your answers. And hopefully you found this video useful.